our dominoes. Now we have Touch Math has dominoes and it's five sets of cards and each set is configured differently from the other set. So like um, here's the blue set upside down, although they're blue and it is counting and quantity concepts. So it's mostly just getting them used to the counting of the, the little pictures. So each set of those five will focus on a certain thing. I went through some of the real basics yesterday for that are kind of elementary. So I wanted to see, I wanted to show some things that you can do with older kids, not just using our dominoes in case you don't have those, but also using real dominoes. And one of them is to um, have them organize the dominoes. And I know there are some students that would really love to be organizing the dominoes, but so that they can see the patterns. Now, um, when you organize them, what are some patterns that you can see? And by the way, you know, there are double nine um, dominoes. So uh, our dominoes will go to du no, double nine. So you could use them interchangeably. But what pattern do you see when I organize my dominoes? Do I, are they uh, progressively getting more as I go up in the column? Well, there's zero, there's zero on the left going all the way from left to right. There's one going from left to right when you move one up. There's a two on the left side going left to right and so on. All right. So it goes one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, it goes to the six in each of the lines. This helps the students see our number system. Also, you could look at this and go, um, if this is a multiplication, um, one times four is four, two times four is eight, three times four, they could be practicing their multiplication. And I noticed, noticed that it stops at the double. So you can't have um, a five with a six on the left, on the right, because that's not the way dominoes are set up. Now with real dominoes, you could flip it over and do it that way. But with our um, touch math dominoes, you can't do that. So you could practice skip counting. All of these could become a multiplication, addition, or subtraction fact, and they could see that the sum, the difference, the product goes in a certain pattern as you go up the, the scale. When we teach addition in touch math, we go to a, the first step of addition is just counting all the touch points. And then we go to the next step, which is adding on. Later in multiplication, we do skip counting. So here I've taken our uh, touch math dominoes and um, this is the red set. And I've lined them up like we just saw the real dominoes. So I have seven zero, seven one, seven, all the way to seven seven. Now with our dominoes, I can't flip this over and do seven, eight because it would be upside down. But I can use this to skip count. I can practice my skip counting. I can skip count by seven on the one. Seven, seven times one is seven. I can skip count by seven on the two, seven, 14. Seven times two is 14. Skip count by seven on the six. Why did I say, why did I use sevens? Because sevens are my kryptonite. Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. So they could practice their skip counting. They could practice their adding on. I can say seven, eight, nine. Seven plus two is nine. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Seven plus seven is 14. So they could be practicing multiplication and addition. You could also have these out there just randomly. 
and uh, they could work with a partner. The partner gets to choose the card and uh, then they have to come up with the either the uh, addition answer or multiplication. You can also use dominoes to compare fractions because when you look at a domino, I just happen to have some, and you hold it vertically, it looks like a fraction. So this fraction would be three fifths. And you could place this in here so that they could practice comparing fractions. You, that could be done by having them randomly draw three dominoes and then arrange them. You could, you could make the rule that the, the greater number will be on bottom. So this would be three fifths, this would be two sixths, and this one would be one fourth. So they could then arrange it in this template in the order of, of which is greater than or less than. Uh, you could also replace the symbol here with an equal sign. The next one, also working with fractions. And I think there's a lot to be done with fractions because it does look like a fraction whenever you're holding the domino vertically but you can add them, you can practice multiplying them, uh, you, you can do all kinds of things and they can work in, pair, in, uh, in pairs where one person sets up the problem, the other one uh, finds the solution and then they, ex, uh, they change. Now the next one I called, and I know we were, I only had to do five, but I did, a few more in this one because I found them. It's called domino magic. So this is what I want you to do. In your head, well, on a piece of paper, think of a domino. And it doesn't matter if you do uh, double nines, if you do double sixes, think of a domino and write down uh, that domino. Okay, does everybody have a domino written down? Oh, somebody, Miranda went to get a real domino. There you go, being very concrete. All right, now I want you to double one of the numbers. Doesn't matter which number. So I have a six and a two, and if I, I would double the six, I could double the six and I would have 12. Now I want you to add three to your answer. Multiply that answer by five. Now add the other number. See, I chose six to double, so I would add the two at this point. and subtract 15. Now, what did you notice about your answer? Did you get all the way through? So, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use mine as the example. I have a 6-2 here. I'm going to double one of the numbers. I'm going to double the 6, so that's 12. I'm going to add 3. That makes it 15. I'm going to multiply 15 by 5, and that is 75. Now I'm going to add the 2, so that's 77 and I'm gonna subtract 15, that's 62. What do you notice about the answer 
in my domino. It's the same, it's 62. So, I mean, that would be just something fun to do with the kids. Um, and they, they could amaze their friends because it works every time. Because I'm one of those people that are like, okay, that worked on that one. Let me try it on a different one. Now, I gave credit to where I wish I had made that up, but I did not. It's not my own invention. And the website was www.stem.org.uk and news and views, opinions. And then uh, they had the article, 10 Ways to Use Your Dominoes in Math. So that's where I got this particular activity. The next acti activity, which is a freebie, they're called magic squares. Now in this magic square, you use the dominoes that they give you. So if you set this up, you would choose three dominoes or four or however many you're gonna use. And uh, you would have to figure out how you're gonna arrange it. Then the students would only know which dominoes to pull and they have to arrange it so that when I add, because it's an addition problem, when I add, then the answer is gonna be the domino that I've laid this way. So you have to be able to arrange the dominoes given these three dominoes. Now I have a zero three and I have a three five. I know that I can't put a five up here because that would mean that I'd have to have another five and I don't but I can put, um, let's see, I can put the three and put the zero here. Oops, did not mean to do that. I can put the three zero here and that means that's gonna be a three. So that's got to be the five three and this would have to be the one four. So they have to figure out how to make these four dominoes fit together to solve the, the magic square. Now that one I could kind of get through. And you know, Dr. Elliot, I hate to say that I have a PhD and I don't know stuff. Yeah. Well, so I'll but, join the crew. But I I I don't, there are things I don't know. So I did uh magic squares. I don't know why it's not going forward. 6A. All right. So, and these I've always thought were very difficult, but they give you the, uh, the four dominoes you're going to use. And they're going to, the, the object is to, this domino has to add to four. Uh, this domino that a four would have to be there. They all have to add up. Um, to what they show as the answers. So you complete them so that each row and column make the same number. And in this case, it's a four, this one's 24, and these are multiplication. I think those are hard. Some of your kids might breeze through it. And Miranda, you've got middle schoolers. They may, you may give them the easier one of this, and it may take them a week to figure it out, but it would be one of those things that there's a, a prize for whoever gets it right first. And the prize could just be, you don't have any homework tonight. I don't know, but um, make it kind of a challenge for them. That way they show that math can, there can be some fun stuff in math. And the obvious, um, to me, the obvious thing to do with dominoes and even our dominoes is to set them up as addition problems. So I can pick two cards and line them up and then find the card that has the sum. So I have two digit addition. And then last but not least, play dominoes. 
get out real dominoes and teach the kids how to play dominoes. You know, they may not learn how to play the real fancy kind of games, but they can learn to line up where they have that the fives have to line up, the sixes. I did this and just took a picture of it so you could uh, see that I took the, the ones that just have the pictures. You could use any of our sets of dominoes and do it the same way. The orange set in our dominoes has the domino side and then has the little picture side. So this is a 6-1. Um, I mentioned this yesterday and uh, a couple of you weren't here yesterday. Using dominoes also helps them learn the those those common configurations, like on the three, on the dominoes and on cards, playing cards, the three is always, look at me, it's backwards, in a diagonal. And so when we see something in that configuration, our brain automatically knows it's three. When I show you this configuration, you don't have to count the dots you've learned that that configuration is a five. So dominoes and playing cards help us learn those fast ways to recognize groups of numbers. Um, so bust out the dominoes and playing cards. And because um, I bet you the Dollar Tree has some dominoes and uh, work on addition, subtraction, multiplication and then just have fun with them. Well, and you actually made me think of an additional use of these, especially with the older child that is <laughs> still moving maybe through the continuum from concrete to semi-concrete to abstract. With the dominoes, uh, grandpas and the cards, what if you actually use some of the concrete objects, you know, and actually you put those in the, configurate, in the configuration match them with the domino card, and then had them also select the domino card that had the abstract numeral plus the one with the touch point, you'd have the full range there because I know with some of the older kids, especially I'm thinking of the ones you were talking about, Natalie and Miranda, for you, the older child who is still way down in the early numeracy skills. And that would be something much different and more like a game than just having them you know, work with a concrete object. This actually could be a little bit of fun because they could put it together like the dominoes. 